Is this not working? All right. Um, in this example, ladies and gentlemen, what we are, what we're going to be doing is we need to we're looking at when the particle is at rest, right? So obviously, if we were given in this case the position function, but the position function, the fastest way and easiest way to determine if something is at rest is we know when the velocity is going to be equal to zero. So we can take the position function and we can say s prime of t is equal to v sub t, because if I'm going to introduce the velocity terminology, I need to make sure we recognize where v sub t is coming from. So then I'll say v sub t um, is going to equal, and then we'll just take the derivative of this, which is 3t squared minus 8t plus 8. And obviously, we want to find when v sub t is equal to 0, so we set it equal to 0. Now, last class period, we had problems that were factorable. right? That made life pretty easy, and that was the right approach. But now, we kind of get a little bit stuck here. Because this problem is non-factorable. That is supposed to be 16t. Good job. You got to do the derivative first, right? All right. So let's go ahead and type that into our calculator. So if we type that in as, um, if I go into my y equals, delete what I did here. Now, we can just type in the velocity function and just type in 3. Again, we'll just use the variable x. I don't know why I'm doing this in y2. Let's go up to y1. So I'll go ahead and type this in as uh, 3x squared minus 8x plus 8. Plus, why do I keep on doing that? OK. Jeez, oh, oh man. I'm just going to delete this. So it's 3x squared minus 16x plus 8. Right? Now, I remember last class period we had like this crazy window basically for on that. So I'm not really sure what exactly uh, this one's going to be at, but I just know like. It's not going to be up to like 200, like right where the zeros are. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to Zoom Standard because I don't know what exactly I last graphed. But you guys can see here that I have these two points, right? Yes? OK, so I'll show you guys two different ways you guys can find these zeros. Because we're looking for these zeros, and we see that they're not at, you know, at, at easy numbers, it looks like. So the two different ways you guys could do this is one is go ahead and use the um, second calc or second trace. And we can just go to option two, which is finding the zeros. And then once we hit that, basically what we're going to do is want to go to left bound and then go to the right bound. So left bound is going to be to the left of the zero. Hit enter. To the right bound, you're just going to want to go to the right of that zero. Hit enter. And then it'll say guess. And you'll hit enter again. Now, this problem, as you guys read through this, this problem is, is used. Or we might, use, we might need this x-intercept again later. Would you guys agree? Possibly in this problem, like further down the road. We might need to know when the particle is at rest. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to hit second quit. I'm going to hit x, hit enter, and I'm going to store that. So I'm going to want to hit store alpha a. Done. OK? Now, let's go back to my graph, and I'll show you guys a, another way to do this. We could also create a horizontal line at 0 and just find the intersection, which usually a lot of times is kind of easier. So what I could also do is go back to y equals and my y2. I can just create a line at 0 and graph it. So now, if I want to find the intersection, I can just do second calc, trace, and I want to find intersect. Enter. And then what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to get really close to the intersection I'm trying to find. So I'm going to have to scroll on this one a little bit more. And I like over clicked. That's tragic. Yeah. 
There she comes back. Coming back. But once you get it nice and close there, hit enter, and then it goes second curve, hit enter. Guess? Boom, intersection, 4.77. So it gives me the other intersection point. Sometimes it might be easier. Just two different ways you guys can contemplate for either way. But again, I want to store this value. So again, I'm going to hit second quit. And I'm going to hit x now. And notice what happens when I hit x. I get that, I get that x value. And now I'm going to want to store this as alpha b. OK? Uh, Sydney, could you move your bag just to try to control this thing? So therefore, by using the graph, we're able to determine that the particle is at rest. at t equals, what would we say, 0.56. And I'm rounding that. Uh, let's just do 0.558 and 4.774 seconds. Does everybody kind of understand?